so this morning <clears throat> I got loaded. It was uh, I ran over there about I think it was about quarter after seven. I got there. Uh, it was pretty dark still when I loaded, so I didn't bother getting the camera out and trying to film any of that while I was loading. Uh, you wouldn't have been able to see anything anyways. So uh, back in Youngstown, Ohio, right now, just stopped for my break and get some fuel. I grabbed fuel, pulled over in the parking lot, got about 10 minutes left before my break's up, and I can get back on the road. So I figured I'd jump out here and, uh, and show you guys the unit and how I secured it and give you the details on it. Here we go. All right. All right, all right, all right. Cold today. I guess there's some snowstorm coming through. It's supposed to be real bad up in Buffalo, but I'm not going that way. Now, here you go. Here's our unit. The Hitachi 250LC excavator. Used, obviously, going back to a, I guess it's a rental. Going back to rental company. Uh, weight of the unit is 52,000 pounds, give or take a little bit for the mud that's on it. So uh, I added a couple chains back here. So instead of just doing my standard 2x, I did a 4x back here. 4x chains there. I didn't like uh, I didn't like it only having six chains, so we added a couple. My flags put on. I use um, I use these magnetized flags. A lot of people don't like them. Uh, I personally I do. Uh, they do. Sometimes they they aren't the best for if you, obviously if you have a plastic tank or something uh, something that's not metal then it's an issue. Uh, for me, I, I haul mostly metal stuff. So as you can see back here, I did the same thing. I X chained. I came off the came off the track. The holes that are in here they have holes in there that you can run your chain through that are lifting or um, securement points but they're packed full of mud and I didn't feel like messing with them this morning. So we just hooked on the outside of the, I just hooked on the outside of the tracks. I got two chains X back here and I got another chain running over the, uh, the arm with the bucket. This, that, this chain here, this is actually a requirement by DOT. Uh, they don't, they want you to, anytime you have a, a hydraulic unit that has an arm that can swing, they want you to make sure that the uh, arm is chained down. Apparently they don't want to, they don't want it to swing while you're driving down the road. Uh, my oversized sign, a little bit dirty. Pretty much same thing on this side. Got my flags out there. Got my one, one special red one. I lost an orange one, so I bought a red one. Uh, same thing as I did before I double double bindered this this single chain that runs across I put one binder on that side Which is pulling the load of the chain holding everything down this binder here is only here to help keep that thing tight while I'm going down the road uh, Same thing on this side hook to the hook to the track This particular unit like I said earlier is uh, weighs about 52,000 pounds she's 11 foot 2 inches wide and roughly 34 foot long tracks are a little over 16 feet uh, my trailer it's a 40 ton trailer it'll handle 80,000 pounds in 16 feet so unit could be a lot heavier although you can't permit 80,000 pounds on a six axle setup so it doesn't really matter for me something i wanted to mention is if you see up there on the exhaust stack how well you can see that there's a bag over top of the exhaust stack there that bag i actually purchased i have a couple of them a couple different sizes i actually purchased purchased it for this purpose that that bag is actually called a turbo saver what happens there is the if you don't cover the exhaust if you're running the machine backwards like this 
where the air can flow down into the exhaust. Uh, if you don't cover the exhaust on the machine, there's, there's po it's possible. Uh, I personally have never had it happen, nor have I ever heard of it happening to anybody I know. But it is possible that the wind could go down inside the uh, exhaust as you're going down the road. Get you put up here. As you're going down the road, wind could go into the exhaust. And what will happen there is as it funnels through the exhaust, it goes right in the turbo system and from what I understand it'll actually spin the turbo backwards and if it spins the turbo backwards then there's a very high potential of it uh, ruining the bearings that are in the turbo so you could very easily if you're going down the road you didn't put a turbo saver on it didn't put something tape up the exhaust something to break the wind up from from being able to go in there funnel in there completely uh, you could spin your turbo backwards, cost the customer thousands of dollars. Um, I would imagine they go to fire that thing up and it doesn't work right. They're probably gonna, they're probably gonna get you to pay for it. So I'm sure that'll be right on the bills and be a claim. So it's something simple. Uh, I, I think that I bought the, I bought two turbo savers at Iowa 80 Truck Stop. I think, I think total I paid for both of them was like 60 bucks, 60 or 70 bucks. Um, it has a it's a bag, nylon bag, and has a bungee cord that hooks to it, and then you can hook it to the machine. So you just put it over top of the exhaust, hook it to the machine. It literally takes 15 seconds to put that thing on. It can save you and your customer thousands of dollars. So very important to uh, keep in mind and, and have on hand when you're hauling this kind of machinery. Uh, looks like my uh, my brake is up, so. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and get on the road. I'll probably film a little bit while I'm driving, I'm heading across PA. Apparently there's some uh, some pretty wild snowstorm coming in this weekend in northern northern PA, up in New York. Uh, apparently Buffalo is calling for, for record-breaking snows of, of three to six feet. I can't, three to six feet of snow, I can't even imagine. I mean, that's taller than I am. So I can't even imagine trying to move around six feet of snow. Uh, but that's what they're saying could potentially happen this weekend, so. I'm going to go ahead and shut you off. I'm going to get back on the road and I'll flip my camera around and I'll do a little bit of filming while I'm trucking. So, talk to you soon. Customer's not uh, not in any big hurry to come out and take the freight off and just go do it yourself. So got that thing parked. I don't know if you saw me where I put it. Put it right over there. Now I need to. Uh, now I'm gonna get this truck hooked back up. Get the deck of the trailer swept off. Put my chains and stuff away. My pickup, I booked a load yesterday. Uh, about 14 miles from here, picking up a, a D6 bulldozer. So, the chains that I've got out now, uh, I don't need to, I don't need to put them completely away into my box or anything. I'm just gonna lay them on a trailer, trailer throw a chain across them, and, uh, Head over to my customer, or head over to my pickup. I'll need 
I'm pretty sure I'll need the same amount of chains. The D6 that I'm picking up is like 56,000 pounds, so pretty sure I'll need the same need the same amount of chains out. Now I'm gonna get hooked back up to this trailer, get on the road, and I'll. Uh, in the sky black smoke and white wine steel horses side by side it's more than just a living y'all hell it's our way of life we're the last of the cowboys 